What is up everybody, Josh here again, and today we have a new Starfield video for you. Today we're going to be showing you how to get a ton of XP and also some credits on the side. We're going to show you how to do that with this outpost right here. We're going to give you a complete list of materials and show you from scratch how to build this. And this is what it looks like from the air. This is going to be one of the simplest XP farm or crafting farms that we have and developed. Let's get into it, shall we? And of course, we're going to start from scratch. So we'll go over real quick the resource list. This is a full entire resource list with crafted materials or just raw materials. If you're going to be making it all yourself, you need 16 extractors, 60 solid storage, 27 windmills. You need an airlock, a habitation, a workbench, and a bed. And that's all you need to craft that. And here are the total crafted mats. As you can see here, 477 iron, 32 tungsten, 514 aluminum, 198 adaptive frames, 2 lead, 2 fiber, 81 nickel, 54 cobalt, 2 beryllium, 2 zero wire, and 6 sealant. And also if you want, right here is the total mats for crafting. And that is with the mats for zero wire and adaptive frames calculated in as well. So that's what you need. Let's show you how to get those mats. So there's going to be two ways for you to be able to get the mats that you need. And the hardest mats to get is going to be the iron, the aluminum, maybe the tungsten, and the nickel. Also cobalt. There is one place, and this is going to be where we actually build our outpost. Right here, Bessel 3B. It is in the Bessel system. And just to kind of give you a comparison, Alpha Centauri's down here. Souls right here. And right here's Bessel. I found this a very long time ago and I've been playing around with different outposts with this place. I've got a few different landing zones and outposts on this place because it's just got so many good materials. It's got your aluminum, it's got your nickel, it's got your iron, it's also got your cobalt. This planet doesn't require any at all building perks or anything to build on. It is not a extreme environment. You don't have to worry about this planet much. There's no fauna, there's no flora. There's little, little ice storms here and there. But other than that, as long as you build a shelter, you should be fine. Vessel 3B is one of the best places I've, I believe for resources. All you gotta do is scan it. We do have level three scanning, but we just landed in an area of iron. Most people can't see iron. It's not a rare resource. So we landed here and what we're gonna do is just set up a little something to kind of hand farm, I call it, or well, it's technically machine farming. We're on PC, so we're gonna hit whatever button it is for you to bring up your scan, where you can scan. And then if you look at the very bottom, you'll see you could place an outpost. And when you're gonna place an outpost, you'll see in the top left of the screen, it'll say what the outpost will give you. So we're wanting some iron, we're gonna place an iron outpost. Didn't know you could build one of those. Then we're just gonna hit V and we're just gonna place one or two irons here, or three, however you got the mats for. So you gotta get some mats, you have to go and buy some mats to get some extractors if you want, or just uh, go and gather them yourself manually with the cutter. We're just gonna set up a little chair here so we can wait here in a minute. And we're also gonna go ahead and set up some power. You gotta have power to power it all. So we're gonna take some of the mats that we've already gathered and make enough power to run these drills, which is about five for three. So we're gonna kind of show you the reason why Bessel 3B is one of the best planets as far as resources. It's because whenever you go to wait on this planet, you'll notice that one hour on this planet actually equates to about 57 hours and 47 minutes universal time. And universal time is actually what extractors go based off of. So what you're gonna do is you could just sleep for like an hour and your extractor should be completely full. And we have 193 iron here. Just repeat it until you get the amount of iron that we just currently showed you in that list which was 675 iron total if you're crafting yourself. And once you're done getting all the resources you want, if you don't want to actually keep this place as an outpost, just go over to your outpost, hold R, and remove the outpost. You will probably become encumbered, which is normal. But most of the mats are going to go to your ship. All the raw resources, though, are going to go into your inventory. See, for example, we picked up all that iron out of those three extractors and then you could just take this and you could transfer it straight to your ship 
since we're right next to our ship here. You got to be 249 meters from your ship to be able to transfer from you to your ship. Our ship is grossly encumbered because we just picked up that base at the very beginning of the video. <laughs> so we can't transfer, unfortunately, because we have all the resources for the building that base currently in the ship. And then once you're done, you're just going to head back to your ship and you're going to go and get your next resource until you get all the resources that you need to craft this outpost. Vessel 3B, the mode of Vessel 3, is really, really rich in aluminum as well. So we have aluminum farm over here that we've done. We've actually kept the aluminum farm. So the area we're going to make the outpost is going to be located right here. And this is right in the, there's like a little, you should be able to see this nickel right here on the map and the iron. You'll see kind of like a land bridge and then there's looks like what oceans on the sides here when you zoom in right here just land on this inner ring which is actually cobalt you may not see those on a scan you may just see all nickel here if so just kind of land a little bit inside of the nickel kind of like right above here where this landing zone is and it doesn't have to be perfect right there in this whole area you can go around i'm going to show you how to hunt for cobalt and hunt for nickel what we're wanting is just cobalt and nickel for this build but that's where you're going to get your cobalt and nickel for this farm now if you're looking for tungsten and beryllium serpentis is one of my favorite places to actually get that from without having to have the extreme environments perks if you go into serpentis 2 and scan it you'll see that there are pockets of tungsten and pockets of beryllium located on this planet and we've kind of just dropped down and made a three to four extractor on each one of those with some power and we just pick up the mats we need to make this build but this planet right here doesn't require any kind of perks or anything to build on and you'll get those two other rare materials right here there's beryllium and aluminum right next to each other right there and then a huge amount of tungsten up here you may not see this here if you don't have advanced scanning like i do up here there's a huge amount of tungsten and lead there's planets you can go and just set down an extractor get the mats you need that we mentioned at the very beginning of this video and you can move on to the next part or i'm going to show you how you can go and kind of buy your mats if you have the credits i'm going to show you my favorite places to buy mats from okay the first one being here in the cheyenne system and we're going to go to aquila city in aquila and once you're at aquila city i'm going to show you how to get to a place called midtown minerals once you get to the rock which is in the very middle of the Seems town like here the crimson fleet is everywhere these days you turn left like a virus and right here is midtown minerals and this is one of my absolute favorite places to buy minerals in the game and this is where you can buy most of the resources that you need once you buy up all the stuff that you want you can actually go over to there's usually there's a chair right here but the UC right can't be that. There's also one around back here you can go to as well. You can just sit and wait for about 48 hours, and that will reset the inventory of the vendor. Another place you can buy is at any trade authority. We're in Neon right here, and we're going to go over to the trade authority. Some, yeah, what? You can also buy it here at Newell's Goods. We have everything you want this time. Oh, no. Let this it go. Again? And they'll have a wide variety of resources as well. You can also buy mats here at Jemison Merchantile. Hi there. And they have all kinds of materials that you can buy. And in the residential section of Sedonia, you're going to find Jane's Good. My stock may be low, but my prices are high. I mean, good. The prices are good. And they'll have several resources that you may need. And that's all the main places you can buy materials. You can buy materials at other places as well. I'll show you one more place. Also in Gagarin, you can actually go to the Gagarin city here. And as soon as you load into this place, you're just going to head straight and then to the right. Watch your step. And you'll see Clint's Collectibles. That's also a place where you can buy materials. Don't mind. Trade in a little bit of everything here. And they'll have a little ton of resources. They have not only minerals, but they also have materials too. So if you're going to buy your stuff, this is the places where you can buy it from. So once you have all your materials, we're going to head back to Bessel 3B. Once you get into orbit, you should be able to scan. Right now, you'll see me, mine says show resources because I've scanned before. 
you will always see nickel since it's not really a, a rare resource. So you'll see what it looks like this right here on the screen. Once you find what this looks like, then what you're going to do is you're going to kind of go inwards a little ways, kind of where this landing area is. And we're going to build an outpost here. So we're going to land there. And as soon as you get down, we're going to hit the scan and we're going to bring up whatever your outpost key is there at the bottom. And you'll see that I have options for nickel, cobalt, and water. So we just need a decent amount of nickel and a decent amount of cobalt. Enough to put six to eight extractors on. So what you're going to do is you're going to run around until you see nickel and cobalt. You should see it about pretty much anywhere around here because this area is pretty heavy on it. Right there, you didn't see nickel. So you want to kind of come back a little ways. If you have your scanner, you can also scan and kind of see where stuff is. Right there is a rather large cobalt vein. And we have the jump pack, by the way, at level four. In case you want to kind of stay in the air like this. You're going to want to find a decent sized cobalt. This is actually a very decent sized cobalt. So we're going to go ahead and set us up an outpost here. And we have the options for nickel. So we're going to go ahead and confirm it. The very first thing we're going to do after we confirm it is we're going to hit V on keyboard and switch the build mode there. And then we're going to switch over to the extractors. And there is a little ton of cobalt here. So we have no issues at all for cobalt. We're going to be able to put eight extractors on this super easy. Let's take a look at nickel. Yeah, we should be able to stick about eight extractors on this. Nickel is really, really close. You could put them really, really close together, but cobalt is a little different. Cobalt has to be spread out a lot more, but I think this will work. If it doesn't, let's say, for example, if we wanted a little bit more nickel, we could do that. All we'll do is just come up and hold R on the outpost and pick it up. Go back to our scan and place it down again and kind of move a little bit closer towards nickel. You're quite handy with the building materials. Go back over to the nickel extractor there. And look, we got a lot more nickel now available. So we can definitely get eight on that. Let's check our cobalt again. Oh yeah, that's a huge field of cobalt right there. So once you get a decent huge field of cobalt like that, and a decent field of nickel kind of like this, you're going to want to head and start placing your extractors. You could do six to eight extractors. If you do six, it's going to be less materials than what we quoted at the beginning of the video. If you do eight, it should be the exact same. I don't believe we have any building perks, but should be able to place us quite a few of these here. And if you start on the very edge of a resource, kind of like that, you should be able to be able to squeeze more in. Okay, and now we have our eight nickel extractors. We're going to go ahead and switch over to cobalt zoom out by using our mouse and we're going to try to squeeze about eight cobalt extractors in here best we can trying to use the edges as much as we can to give us as much room as we can now every map's going to be different your landing zone might be different you just kind of got to go around and find the maps that you need and it's really easy as long as you're using the outpost beacon to do so. We now have eight extractors on each resource. We have eight cobalt and eight nickel. Now what we need to do is we need to set up some storage right here in the middle of these two. Usually I try to put them in between the middles. So for example, you see how we could kind of put a bunch of uh, boxes right through here. We're going to have to place 60 of these. Well, you don't have to place 60, but actually more than 60 is, is better. The more boxes you can place, the better, because that means the more mats you can hold without having to sleep. But just for the sake of this demonstration, we're going with 60 boxes. We're going to craft them right here. And that's going to be 60 solid storage. We're going to kind of zoom in here a little bit. We're going to start here at ground level and craft. Just basically hitting E, letting it like so. Just put about 60 boxes in here. Doesn't matter. You could stack them as high as you want to. I don't usually like to go over six. If you're on desktop, you can left click to actually change the orientation or where the box is going to go like so. 
So just build just 60 boxes and stack them. So once you have 60 of these containers, what you're going to do is hit tab to toggle to modify mode. And when you do so, what we're going to end up doing is actually linking all these containers together. And the reason why that is, is because we're going to be dumping all of our resources from our extractors into these containers so we can craft with it. What you're going to do is right click and create an output line to the one right next to it. Right click, right click again. And you're just going to keep going down through here like that. Like so. I like to do this in first person, but if you like to do this in the V menu, you can. It is completely up to you how you do so. But you just kind of need to do so. Just tie them all together. And once you have them all tied together, when you right click on one of them, you won't see them in blue highlight anymore. That means they're all kind of tied together and you're good to go. What we'll do now is we will go ahead and hit V and bring out our building mode like this. And we're going to tie all of our extractors over to this storage. So we're going to right click on the extractor like so. And it really does not matter which container you, you tie them to. You could tie them to a different container on each. They're all tied together. All the mats and resources get transferred evenly through the containers. It does not matter what container you tie it to you could tie it to all the same one if you want just so it looks clean you can or you can tie it to a different one but what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to connect every one of your extractors to at least one of these boxes that's linked together like so and you'll need to do that for all 16 extractors or however many you crafted and we're just going to double check and look at all these little lines coming out from our extractors and we're going to make sure they're all going to at least a box and yes i know that doesn't look pretty at all once they're all connected then we're ready to make the power and we'll go ahead and make the power kind of to the left of these boxes here just in some kind of wide open space also, just to let you know, we're not actually building from our inventory. We're just building from our ship. So if you put your stuff in your ship, you could build from there. We're going to go ahead and build the 27 windmills. And what we're going to do is we're just going to place one, move over a little bit, place one, move over. Keep doing so till we go about five wide. Then we're going to go down. And place them like so. Just kind of nice and neat in a row. And we have all 27 of those placed now. And they should be powering up all of those devices. Now, these are going to sit here and mine you resources. And then what they're going to do is they're going to dump all them resources into these 60 containers. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come back a little bit ways from the containers here. You could build your outpost however you want to build your outpost. We're going to do a hydroponic lab. I like those because they're glass and they're very pretty to be inside of. We'll place it down right there and confirm it. Then we'll place an airlock on the side of it there. Like so. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of the airlock. Once you go into it, you, you can hit whatever you use to scan, and then you can hold R, the one for outpost. That will bring you into your build menu, and you can build inside of your outpost, kind of like so. If you want me to make a full outpost guide, I'll let you guys comment down below. Tell me you want a full outpost guide, and I'll do one. It might take me some time to get it done. But we're going to switch over to the industrial workbench, and we're going to place it now. If you can see mine's moving a lot slower like so, here's another little tip for outposts. If you hit escape or pause and then go to settings and then go to controls, under down below control or hot swap, you'll see outpost item rotation speed. And I got mine down, I think it's like a, a three or a four by default, but turn it down to one and that will make your stuff spin super slow in your outpost. So when you go to place something, it doesn't spin around as fast. We're just gonna place an industrial workbench in here. We're also going to switch to furniture and just place this a just a regular bed in here so we can sleep. And that's it for the inside here. 
So included in that mat list that we gave you, this includes a landing pad with shipbuilder. And if you wanted to do the landing pad, I would highly suggest the landing pad with shipbuilder and you'll see why here very shortly. Once we get into the sailing aspect of the video, what we'll do is we'll add a landing pad with shipbuilder. This should accommodate pretty much any ship as long as it's not over 80 meters long and it can land on planet still. Pretty much the outpost is now finished. We are 100% set up. We got us a landing pad. We got storage. We got the extractors. We got the power to power everything and a place to craft stuff. So this is where the magic begins. Go ahead and exit out of everything and head straight over to your airlock and the little one by one. And this is the part where you're going to fill up your storage containers. And it is pretty wise to use this facility the reason why is because i like to look at my storage containers and see how full they are we're going to sleep for two days and those should be about completely full so we're going to come over here to the bed which is 115 hours and 31 minutes and that's going to do a ton of farming up for us in just two hours and we slept for two hours and as you can see most of those containers are full there's a few that's not you can sleep for even longer if you want but we should be ready to use our industrial bench now we're going to click on this right here, the ISO centered magnet, and you should see tons of mats available for you to be able to craft that. We needed nickel and cobalt, which is what we're farming. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab this little bar right here and adjust it. If you're on console, you'll have to do it however you could do it and confirm it. Ah, I see what you've put together there. Clever. Very clever. For every stack, you're going to get about 100 XP, technically 99. So what we're going to do to speed this up, you can either make like a macro, but if you're not into macros, here's one thing you can do. You can scroll up the list until the ISO centered magnet is up top. Once it's up top here, you're going to put your mouse in between this little period and the A here, right there. Click on that. And then if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll get to a sweet spot where you can pretty much left click. And then we're going to hit E to confirm. And what we're going to do is just keep left clicking and E to confirm. And this is going to sit here and basically craft 98 to 99 per turn. And you're going to sit here and basically do this until you get bored or level up to whatever level you want to have. You can sit here and literally sit here and craft. Just kind of doing this in real time to show you. You'll be getting a ton of ISO centered magnets, which will make you encumbered. And we'll show you what to do with that soon. We've completely run out of nickel now. If you run out of the material, what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and head back over to your bed, which should be not too far from you. And you're going to sleep for about two to three hours. We'll just do three hours. And that should really fill up your stores. So you should be able to craft a ton of materials again. Just go back, scroll back up again. Click in between the dot and the eight. Go down a little bit. And there you go. Should be, you'll find the sweet spot there. Once you get it, just leave it there. Left click, hit E. Left click, left click, hit E. Left click, left click, hit E. And just kind of do this until you level or get bored to doing this. And we just went from 42 to 43. So sit there and level up as much as you want and become as encumbered as you want. And the reason why is we're going to show you how to sell all this stuff and make some money. So once you have this set up, you literally can sit here as much as you want. If you wanted to level up just a few times so you can get a special skill or say if you're wanting to do another point, but you just need another level up so you can get another skill point, you can do this just a couple of times then level and that'll get you to that next skill point it's up to you completely how much you use this and how much you craft the more you craft the more money you'll make and the more you craft the more xp you'll get so after you've done it as many times as you've wanted to we did it about two to three times i do believe here we have like three thousand of these iso centered magnets now you could do one of two things you can either dump it and then just get rid of it if you're not looking for credits but if you're looking for credits you could go and sell these to vendors and we're going to show you how to go and actually accomplish this 
So the reason why we built our ship dock not too far from us is because we want to try to get over there as quick as we can. When you move this encumbered, you're going to see that your oxygen goes super quick and that your HP is going to go down super quick too. We're going to come over here to our ship dock. Our ship dock doesn't have our ship on it because we just crafted it. One way to prevent that is to come over to the ship builder control console here. Let me recover a little bit so it's not so loud. And we're going to click on view and modify ships. Then we're going to just enter the ship builder mode. If you do that, that pulls your ship over to this device here. You should be able to just save and then load the game like so. And our ship is here in the ground for some reason. And once you're in your ship, plot a course to your favorite place to sell. Mine personally, because I'm part of the Crimson Fleet, is Crix. And there's a lot of vendors there that you can sell. Just go to a place that has a ton of vendors that will buy those parts or any of those vendors that we mentioned earlier that sold you materials. But we're going to head over to Crix because it's, it's literally one of my favorite places to sell stuff. And we're going to sit here and dock at the key. And just in case you're wondering where it is in the system, it's right here next to the pretty much only large planet right here, the key. Gotta be able to get in there, be friendly with the Crimson Fleet, but it's completely up to you if you want to come here. You can go somewhere else if you want, if you have a better place to sell things. And we're going to head over into the depot and just sell all of our stuff here. Need something? The right protective gear. Use all these up. vendors. Best place to actually sell is right here at Zurus and over here at the Trade Authority. They have the highest amount of credits. And you may have a, a ton more. I didn't do a lot of the crafting, but you may have a ton more magnets to sell. Then once you sell it, you can go ahead and heal yourself up and you should be good to go. Now, if you need to sell and then wait for the vendor's credits to come to back, if you've already hour. sold all of it, outside the clinic here, like a different time. you could sit in this chair and you can wait here for 48 hours. That will reset the vendor's credits or any chair around here. And then you could sell it. It's definitely not the best credits in the game for sure, but you can either drop them or sell it. If you want to get XP and credits, that's definitely one way to do so by using an outpost. And that's it for this video. Don't forget if you like what you see to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Subscribing will give you Starfield videos just like this one and update videos whenever those come out. Comment down below if you'd like to see a outpost guide where you could see some pretty neat stuff like what cargo links do and such. And let me know if this video helped you with your XP and credit needs. And hopefully we'll see you next time. Peace.